Joining me for more is Sumit Roy. He is the CEO of Realty Income. Sumit, it's a pleasure to have you here. Overall, what would you say is the state of the economy right now? Thank you for having me, Kelly. Um, so to understand the impact to our company, I'll briefly provide a bit of context. Uh, while we are one of five REITs in the S&P 500 that primarily owns retail properties, I want to draw a distinction on the type of retail properties we own, which are single tenant net lease properties, which means our gross margins are almost 100%. More importantly, the vast majority of our tenant registry consists of essential retailers, just like you mentioned, mm -hmm. that operates in industries with non-discretionary or low price point component to their business. Our top retail tenants are names like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar General, and Walmart. These are tenants that are holding up well or in some cases experiencing tailwinds during this pandemic. Um, I would suggest that our portfolio has performed well given the circumstances. And for the month of August, we collected around 94% of the contractual rent due to us. Wow. The one, the one industry in our portfolio that has been disproportionately impacted is the theater industry which represents less than 6% of our revenue and where our exposure is almost entirely with AMC and Regal Cinemas. And your stock price this year is down about 12% year to date. So again, not terrible given that your exposure could be a lot worse. Um, but also, you know, what would you tell investors about when you might see you know, a better ROI? Do we just have to wait this thing out? Are there you know, bright spots even, as you mentioned, in August with 94% of rents paid? Uh, do you think we're turning a corner here? Um, if you look at the trend lines, you know, and we've been sharing our monthly information in terms of rent collection starting in April, um, every month our rent collection numbers have improved. And this is a testament to um, the, the tenants that actually construct our all our portfolio and their businesses have improved. Even the theater business, um, uh, there was a, uh, a, a um, news that I saw earlier today that um, um, almost the vast majority of the AMC theaters are going to be opened on Friday. A hundred uh, AMC theaters have opened, and that has translated into high rent collection. Hmm. If you look at our own stock performance and you see how we've done, um, we we had traded off quite a bit more. Uh, we were down into the, into the uh, high 50s. And uh, we have started the recovery process. And so we feel very good that we have turned the corner. Uh, the businesses are starting to improve. It's translating into higher rent collections for us. And so um, yeah. things are looking up. So let me then ask you if you can shed some insight about what's happening across the country. Are you guys positioned and experiencing this flight to the suburbs? And do you think it's going to last? Yeah. Uh, you know, our geographic footprint, again, like you said, 49 states, Puerto Rico and the UK, uh, given the nature of our business, our properties tend to not be in dense metropolitan areas like Manhattan. So migration to suburbs should be a net positive for us. Uh, people do appear to be prioritizing additional space and spending money on their homes as evidenced through the strong performance of Home Depot, one of our top tenants. I don't think we subscribe to the notion that dense urban areas are forever changed, but I can speak to what we've seen within our portfolio and our non-discretionary and low price point retail, much of which is located in suburban and rural areas, continue to perform very well. For example, a large portion of our dollar store exposures are property leased to Dollar General, located in suburban or rural areas of the south southeastern United States, and Dollar General continues to perform well. It's a very similar story with 7-Eleven. A lot of our properties are in Texas, in suburban areas, and they have continued to perform very well.